A hundred years ago, an average American died at the age of 45. During those days, not only were the lives short, but the quality of life also went down very rapidly because they did not have access to all the things that we take for granted in today's world. Simple things like access to clean drinking water, access to universal vaccination, access to a primary care doctor. Over the past 100 years, however, we have made enormous progress. An average person in 21st century America, as of last year or this year, is dying around 78 if you're a male, 82 or 83 if you're a female. So we are living much, much, much longer compared to literally two or three generations ago. However, unfortunately, while living longer, we are actually dying longer because of enormous disease burden imposed by very common chronic preventable diseases. So what do I actually mean by dying longer? Right? Yes, I am alive, but I am unable to get up and go for a walk with my dog because I just got an amputation because of diabetes, which is preventable. I'm not even able to sleep properly because of severe diabetic neuropathy related pain. Right? I'm not able to go on a cruise vacation because I'm hooked up to a dialysis machine. So if you add all these things, all this burden that's imposed by common chronic preventable diseases, while living longer, an average person in this country is losing almost close to quarter of a century of his or her life due to lack of quality. That's what I mean by dying longer. So how do I come into this picture? Because I am an interventional cardiologist. I am not a preventive public health official. Right? My entire training, my entire career, my entire current day's practice is spent in the deep dungeons of a lead shielded cardiac cath lab. So how did it come to be for me personally to step outside the confines of a cardiac cath lab and come in front stage with my colleagues, my family, my friends, and now with the society at large to make a humble plea to take prevention and health promotion and health maintenance into our hands. And this is where I would like to ask a very simple question. What does health mean to all of us? And for discussions such as this, the very word healthy can be broken apart into heal thyself, meaning that majority of staying healthy is in our hands through practicing the pillars of lifestyle medicine. However, the words written in Chicago Tribune in 1975 ring true today, and that hurts me. And those words are, the idea of preventive medicine or idea of prevention is faintly un-American. It begins with the idea of accepting that the enemy is us. Very powerful words. But when I say these words that the enemy is us, I'm not saying those words with the intent of shifting the blame onto the society or onto my patients, but to discuss the importance of personal responsibility. Because so much of staying healthy is in our hands. But as professionals and as society collectively, we have neglected these simple pillars. And as a consequence, we are paying a dear price in the loss of quality of life and suffering and dying due to diseases that should not exist in 21st century America. And the next question I want to ask is, why do we actually want to be healthy? Right? And no matter how descriptive, how emotional, and how detailed our answers are, all of those answers will fall into only two broad categories. And those are the only two reasons why we all want to be healthy. And those two reasons are, we want to be healthy because we want to live a long life and a life full of quality. And if you really think about it, there's no third reason. Yeah, we may come across with the deep emotions and deep values as to why and how we connect with those two entities, but there's really no third entity. And also I'm showing them as two separate entities. As we all know, the quality of life and the quantity of life are inseparable like the two sides of a coin. And now in 21st century America, or for the most part of the world, we have the luxury 
of not dying from infections and famine. Two things, lack of food and infection were the leading causes of death across recorded human history except for very recent times. So is it unreasonable for someone like myself to ask or make a humble plea? Can we take control of things that we can and live a happy, long and a healthy life? So again, we have ignored these very simple pillars. And how are we paying a price? In addition to the lack of quality of life, we have also paid a price in creating this system that unfortunately we call the healthcare system, which is actually a disease management system, which is standing upside down as a pyramid, where the entire emphasis at the very highest level, at the very expensive level, is investing money in disease management with very little on prevention. So the way I feel this and the way I see this, that every single one of us, because it takes five to make a fist, it also takes a drop and a drop and a drop to make an ocean. So the onus is on all of us, every single one of us, not just doctors, not just nurses, because we are all part of a single same society. The onus is on all of us to lend a forceful and a powerful hand to flip this pyramid of healthcare system back on its base, where the maintenance of health is the primary focus. Yes, there are always going to be people, people like myself. And to be honest with you, I should not be the one putting out this message, right? I'm an interventional cardiologist. I should be the one waiting in a cardiac cath lab to save your life when everything else failed. But guess what, folks? We are failing everything else. And that's why a guy like me is stepping outside the conference of a cardiac cath lab and asking people, don't meet me there. So when I ask you and when I challenge you to lend me and lend yourself, most importantly, a forceful hand to flip the pyramid back on its base, what are the tools that we can equip you with? An ordinary non-medical person in the society. And those are what we call the pillars of lifestyle medicine. And these are very simple pillars, except for having to pay a little for our food if you really look at it from a practice and a practicality point of view, all of them are free, right? The pillar number one I would like to talk today about is social support. Because if I'm gonna step into your life and your health and ask you or challenge you to change 10, 15, 20 different things, or to be very practical, six different things about your life. Guess what, folks, I'll give you an example. Right? I work with a lot of Vietnam era veterans or veterans of many generations. And it's difficult, right? It's easy for me to come across and say, hey, do this, 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 and differently. But the first thing that we need is social support. And the reason I think that social support or the lack of it is now becoming a huge burden is even long before COVID, we as a society have, have been rapidly becoming fragment, fragmented and disconnected. And it turns out after age 65, if you self-report a life lived in isolation, the risk imposed by that is almost identical to that of an individual smoking 15 cigarettes. That's the influence, that's the negative influence of living in isolation. So first thing that we need to do is come together as families, come together as professionals, come together as small towns, large towns, prioritize staying healthy and demand that of our, our, ourselves and our policymakers. And the second most important thing is mindfulness. Be acutely aware of why health matters to us. Because when I ask that question, why do you want to be healthy? You will come up with an answer. And that's what I want you to be mindful of about every decision that you make throughout the day that I want to be healthy because I want to see my child graduate. I want to see my granddaughter walk down the aisle. I don't want to end up with a heart attack or a stroke or two. Make those answers count on a daily basis. So that's the concept of mindfulness and stress reduction, right? It's easy for me to stand here and say, hey, reduce your stress. It is multifactorial. Stress comes, comes to us in many, many different ways, but there are a lot of help, especially now in the digital world. There are so many apps and so many help, you know, within the realm of your healthcare professional and also within the realm of your own family support. 
So stress reduction and mindfulness are extremely important. Third one, but seldom talked, is sleep. We cannot negotiate with sleep. Sleep is an evolutionary must, right? It's negotiating with sleep is like negotiating with time. Once gone, it's gone. So please prioritize sleep. There are many, many resources outside, right? Sleep is one of the central pillars of lifestyle medicine. The next one I want to talk about is regular physical activity, right? Uh, compared to a generation or two ago, on an average, we as a country are definitely moving more, but there is so much more to do because there is such a huge gap in terms of what the society is doing in terms of physical activity. So whatever you can move, keep it moving because a body in motion stays in motion. I, I literally tell my patients who are even on a wheelchair are not able to move. If all that you can move is your hands up and down a few times a day, please do that. Right? If you don't have time to go to the gym, park your car a little farther out from, from your office and take extra few steps. Right? All of these things count. Right? And the next one is nutrition. Right? And this is where everybody wants to argue about it. But the science is, again, the nutrition science is complicated, but agreement is, 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 is universal in the sense that almost all medical organizations on the planet have a singular message. Eat more unprocessed plant-based food. Eat more vegetables, eat more lentils, eat more whole grains, eat more beans, eat more fruits, and drink more water. And you will be shocked if I told you, as of 2021, if we go out and look at the Healthy Diet Index amongst American youth ages 12 to 19, the signal is statistically undetectable. The percentage is listed as zero. I can't make this up even if I tried. These are the 2021 statistics for healthy diet amongst American youth ages 12 to 19. And that's where we are completely losing focus because prevention starts early. And people ask me, what's a good time to start? It is never too late. As early as possible and maintain it for as long as possible. And I often say when I give these talks, is prevention starts from womb to tomb or another way of saying is from lust to dust it's never too early it's never too late and the next pillar of lifestyle medicine is avoiding toxic substances right tobacco uh, surprisingly up to 10 to 15 percent of, of american youth are still using some form of a tobacco and we are going to continue to pay the price for it and same thing with alcohol, right? If you want to drink alcohol, find many, many reasons, other reasons than health. Don't drink alcohol thinking that it's good for you because I know people who drink alcohol thinking that it's good for them, right? Even the modest amount of alcohol consumption has been shown to increase many cardiovascular risks and event rates. So once we take control of these very simple things on a daily basis, yes, it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's hard. As long as, but we are mindful, we chip at it one little step at a time, one little step at a time. Just imagine this way in terms of behavior modification, right? If I were to say, you know what, I or myself or somebody is on the top of being healthy, but we want all of you to meet us up there. But I'll do you a favor. I'll throw you a ladder. Of course, I'm gonna throw you two ladders, one with steps three feet apart, one with steps 10 feet apart. Which one any one of us would pick? The one with baby steps. That's all I'm asking as an interventional cardiologist. Take those baby steps on a daily basis so you don't have to step into my cardiac cath lab. My message, America, is that I have two-pronged approach. One is I have a carrot and a stent. You pick. Another way of saying my message is that there are two places that you can meet me at kitchen table or a cardiac cath table, you pick. Please don't meet me in the cardiac cath table. I'm begging you, I'm imploring America, stay away from my cardiac cath lab. That's my message. And most of it, most of it can be done by practicing the simple six pillars of healthy living and lifestyle medicine. So I wish you all nothing but the best of health, best of joy, and best of love.
in health. Let there be health. Thank you.